The railways came to Guildford in 1845 and the station buildings that many people will remember were constructed in 1888. By 1988 they were being pulled down and Dave took a series of pictures that we can see the station how it once looked and as that demolition took place for the new station buildings that would arise. Guildford Station's Down Goods Yard was situated adjacent to Warnetry Close and by the late 1960s goods traffic was decreasing rapidly on Britain's railways. Parts of the goods yard here were turned into a car park but some of the goods sheds did exist and Dave photographed these as they were being demolished in 1988. Here we see station approach and there were once a number of small shops here. In the second picture we can see Malcolm the hairdressers and the stamp dealer. Note the sign in this picture for office development on the side of the station bordering Guildford Park Road. In the view is the Farnham Road Bridge. Guildford's motive power depot had long gone by the time this picture was taken. It shows the site then being used as a surface car park before the Farnham Road multi-storey car park was built on the site. Taken from the Farnham Road Bridge, we now see the new station buildings and also other development taking place. And then two pictures taken from Yorkies Bridge off Warnetry Close, firstly looking down towards the station and then looking north. Looking at buildings that are still standing but their usage has changed, the first thing we notice in this picture is that the car is going in the wrong direction. However, in this sequence of the high street, just look at the different shops that have come or gone over the last 30 odd years. into Chapel Street and a sign for a butcher's. That would have been Reading Company that was there for many years. And then in the High Street and Jeffrey's Sports Shop, a well-known family firm. The shop closed on August the 31st, 2001, after trading in the town for 150 years. The facade of the Three Pigeons pub may look quite old, but in fact it's a replacement following a fire there in 1916. In the Upper High Street, and you may just see the silhouette of a woman and the letters MJ. This was Marion Jacks, a ladies undergarment specialist. Since becoming a shopping precinct in the late 1960s, Ferrari Street has seen an awful lot of changes over the years. The last few pictures show it when Woolworths was just about to disappear and then a view looking across towards the Ferrari Centre. Here's the Blackfriars pub that was included in the lower level of the Ferrari shopping centre when it opened in 1981. It wasn't a success and closed after seven years and the space converted to retail units. And also here's some pictures that Dave took in July 1980 as the Ferrari centre was being built. This is 1985 
and the building of the White Lion Walk shopping centre, and also Ayers Bakery, a business that served the town well for many years. Next we see some construction close by, on the part of North Street that borders Phoenix Court. Moving up North Street to the corner with Woodbridge Road, and we see the premises that was once Pascal's. They sold bicycles, prams, models and baby clothes. And then in 1989, when it had all changed, and here you can see Outfitters Shirley's, Pickford's Travel, Williams Brothers News Agents, and Food for Thought. Two pictures of Swan Lane, and the east side showing it before it was taken over by Boots. There's also a sign for Victoria Wine Off Licence. That had previously been the Seven Stars pub, one of the two in Guildford that were bombed in 1974 by the IRA. More of North Street and with these the fishmongers that had been established in Guildford in 1861. I don't think Air Circus was in business for very long. And before then, at that spot on the corner with Market Street, there had been the confectioners Lavels. And then on the other side, we see Mr Howard, the menswear shop. And who remembers Bernie Inn, the market tavern? Then looking on to the other side of the road, we see the catalogue shop Index and the toy shop known as the Entertainer. Another quick detour, this time down Lee Power Road and the pub called the Mary Rose. It had previously been known as the Carpenter's Arms, and it is now a bar called Five and Lime. And the telephone exchange on the corner with Lee Powell Lane. Note the covered walkway to the buildings opposite. And on that side in the 1960s, based there had been the Ministry of Pensions and National Insurance, the District Office of the National Savings Committee, and the Ministry of Public Buildings and Works. Now at the top of North Street, we see where the post office was for a little while. This building had once been the home of Cowan Gate. Here's Vaughan House in Chertsey Street, awaiting a makeover. It is still a hostel and now run by the Riverside Group. It opened in 1896 as a working men's home. Here we are back down by Bridge Street and Onslow Street and the group of buildings that include the Night Spot, Harper's and then later known as The Drink. And anyone remember that millennium clock that was outside there for a while? The supermarket chain Iceland had a store in Onslow Street on the corner with Bedford Road for a number of years. It's gone now and these buildings have actually been remodelled somewhat. It's now called Tempus Court. The Robra Buildings takes its name from the Robra Boot and Shoe Company, who occupied the building from 1919 to 1928, taking over from motor vehicle manufacturers Dennis Brothers. In later times it became rather forlorn. There were a number of businesses that operated from there, and by the 1980s it was even faced with demolition. But it was saved, and today the building is occupied by a Weatherspoons pub and the Academy of Contemporary Music. There are some typical vehicles that could be seen on the roads in the 1980s in these views. Also Roman's Volvo garage that was in Woodbridge Road and then looking further down towards the Ferrari Centre. Guildford has plenty of examples of ornate carved wooden barge boards underneath the slopes of gabled roofs as seen here in Woodbridge Road. It was once the home of Selden's refrigeration and air conditioning firm and is now occupied by Anderton's music store. More wooden barge boards, this time on the Prince Albert pub in Stoke Road and next to it the fish and chip shop that was run by Roy Stevens and his wife. It's still a chippy today but part of the frontage that could be seen in this view went years ago. In Chertsey Street the building that was originally the R. White's mineral water factory from 1899 to 1920 it was later used as a dairy and is now offices. And to finish this section, boarded up houses in Martyr Road that have now been renovated. Quarry Street and what was the Royal British Legion. 
and then the footbridge that links Bedford Road and Walnut Tree Close. It looks like it was quite new then, and that's going to be replaced soon as well. Guildford's carnival processions were very popular in the 1960s, 70s and into the 1980s, and Dave took some cracking photos of them. The first picture in this sequence shows PC Jeff Hemmings, who recalls rather wryly that he's in step, but everyone else is out of step with him as they walk up the Upper High Street. Large crowds lined the route of the carnival as it made its way through the town to Stoke Park, where the Guildford Town Show was taking place, usually in early September. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police took part one year. Yes, the real Mounties. It's believed that this was 1968 and that they were on a tour of the UK at the time. It would appear that Dave loved taking pictures of these carnivals and would often stand in Woodbridge Road. Local organisations, groups and charities and businesses all took part, including sea cadets and scouts. Dave dated these pictures as September the 4th, 1982. There seem to be plenty of marching bands. There's also the Pilgrim Morris men and the St John Ambulance cadets. And now in 1983 on September the 3rd. In this sequence you can see a steamroller and an English Civil War reenactment group. These carnivals really did bring different communities of Guildford together and I'm sure they had a whole lot of fun in the process.
And finally, some undated pictures, but they look to be from the 1980s. So many local faces in these. Can anyone recognise themselves? There have been calls to reinstate the carnival, but it's just such a big thing to organise these days, and nobody yet has come forward to try and do so. Each year the carpet bedding in the castle grounds reflects an event that's taking place. And in 1969 it was Apollo 11, the space flight that first landed humans on the moon. Princess Anne visiting Guildford in what may be 1972 when she opened the sports centre in Bedford Road. Standing just behind her in the dark blue suit is Guildford's then MP David Howell. Dave regularly attended Guildford's Remembrance Sunday parade and wreath lane and these are pictures that he took in 1975. On the original slide of this picture, Dave noted that he took it in June 1976 at Mill Mead, and it was a beating retreat event. Close inspection of the image reveals that these men were from the Queen's Regiment. The summer of 1977 saw the celebrations for the Queen's Silver Jubilee and in Guildford the High Street was bedecked with shining flowers and tableaus. Shops decorated their windows to mark the event and on July the 6th Princess Anne visited Guildford. A pageant took place in Shelford Park and on July the 7th a beacon was lit on the mount. Wednesday, July the 28th, 1981, saw the wedding of Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer. It was a public holiday, and here, in George Road, Dave took some pictures of a street party. Standing to attention and saluting outside the Shaftesbury Hall in Artillery Terrace, a Maureen Lehman and Shirley West. It was the 50th anniversary of VE Day and celebrations were taking place across Guildford. And here we see some celebrations in Hayden Place outside the Live and Let Live pub. The heavy rains and flooding that occurred across southern England in September 1968 was said at the time to be a disaster which happened only once in a thousand years. On Saturday night, September the 14th, it began raining. There was a torrential downpour throughout Sunday and by Monday the riverway had burst its banks and the bottom of the high street was under six feet of water. Dave of course took some iconic pictures. The fact that the sun shone on the Monday was probably a factor that brought lots of people into Guildford to witness the floodwaters before they receded. Dave also visited some of the back streets close to the river and took pictures in Laundry Road, William Road and Lees Road. Downstream, the floodwaters of the Riverway covered the bypass at Ladymead. From there, Dave went to Stoke Bridges on Woking Road. 
and photographed the water meadows across the river from the Row Barge pub. He also pictured lines of traffic on Woking Road and also the flooding at Stoke Mill, then a paint factory owned by Grant and West. There has of course been flooding in Guildford since 1968, but nowhere near as severe. Here are some pictures that Dave took on December the 28th 1979, at the foot of the town and then along Mill Mead. And now some pictures that are undated, but they could be from the late 1970s or early 80s. The river hasn't quite burst its banks in Guildford Town Centre, but as you'll see, Shelford Meadows is flooded. Guildford was again flooded in November 2000, and it's believed these pictures date from then. It was the highest the floodwaters have been since 1968. Dave didn't photograph many famous people, but here's cricketer Gary Sobers playing for Knotts against Surrey at the Woodbridge Road Sports Ground in 1969. It was of course the year before that Sobers scored his famous six sixes in one over in a match against Glamorgan. Also in 1969, on June the 14th, he photographed Warpleston and Godalming cricket clubs and some of the action as well. The match was being played at Holloway Hill in Godalmin. Someone else took this picture of Dave taking names of some cricketers. We don't know the location or who they are, but it suggests he was also supplying photographs to the Surrey Advertiser for publication. For many years, Dave was the official photographer for the Castle Green Bowling Club, who play in the delightful surroundings of the castle grounds in the centre of Guildford. 
The second picture dates to about 1998 and shows the then Mayor of Guildford, Keith Childs, preparing to bowl. Although Dave followed Guildford City Football Club, his real passion was for West Ham United. Here's a toy shop window with a display dating back to 1975, when the Hammers were in the FA Cup final. And here's Dave pictured with Des and Ivy Earl and their son Keith in their back garden in Park Barn. Dave, Des and Keith went to the cup final that year. It was a joyful occasion for Hammers fans as their team beat Fulham 2-0 with both goals scored by Alan Taylor. Like many ordinary blokes, Dave's social life centred around working men's clubs. The highlight, of course, being the men's out into the seaside each year. The first picture here is quite an old one. Dave's dad is seated far left and Dave is next to him, both with pints of beer in their hands. The next photo looks to be the obligatory stop halfway to the seaside, perhaps for a comfort break and some more beer. And the next two pictures at the seaside itself. Some great characters here, all having a wonderful day out. I wonder if this minibus ever took people on an outing to the seaside. Evidently it still exists. It was once owned by Blue Saloon Coaches and is pictured outside its premises in Stoke Road. Now the working men's clubs and pubs are open, so raise a glass to the character seen here. In the first picture Dave's dad is behind the bar. There's a group of people around a piano having a sing-song and some more entertainment going on, and everyone enjoying themselves. It's time for another drink, so it's up to the bar we go. And in the colour picture, it looks like it's Christmas time by the decorations on the wall. And also at the back on the right, you can see a seven pint Ferrari New Pipkin Ale can. Does anyone remember those? The drinks are flowing now. These two seem to be having a great laugh. And note the fruit machine behind them. And then there's three ladies having a great night out. And then a man doing a bit of a knees up. Or is he impersonating a Freemason? They're still serving, so there's time for another drink. And if you look closely at these pictures, all the old favourites can be seen. Fremlins, Watneys, Tavern Keg Bitter, Hart Lager, and plenty of fags and Costella cigars behind the bar. We're now in the Elm Tree pub in Stoke Fields, when publicans Chaz and Silver celebrated 21 years of being there. Dave actually didn't tell us the date, but nevertheless we do know that in the next picture, photographed are Albert and Spike, also at the Elm Tree pub, on the 29th of December 1979. Unfortunately we have no idea who these two gents are, and what the beverages are they're serving, but they certainly look well pleased with them. Three more pictures of which the event or meeting and the location is unknown. It's interesting that those who appear to be on the committee are all men and in the audience it's the men who are sitting at the front with some women behind. Working men's clubs and social clubs just wouldn't operate without members of their committees doing all the paperwork behind the scenes. And this guy here we think is actually involved with organising either a snooker tournament or a league match. There are plenty of cups and trophies being presented here at what we believe is a snooker tournament award ceremony. Dave wasn't shy when it came to getting in amongst the action, but here he didn't ask any of them to face his camera.
In this picture, Jerry Westlake, who was a train driver from Guildford, is seen collecting a raffle prize, consisting of a Moulinex electric hand beater. So well done, Jerry. I'm sure your wife was very pleased. Continuing with a few more pictures of trophies being presented in local clubs. However, this last picture was taken outside. It may have been something to do with cricket or bowls, but it looks like it was taken right next to a field. 1970s fashions in all their glory here. Note the man in the white suit with those flared trousers. The band looks to be a decent size. And with the clock at half past 12, it would suggest there was a late note extension at this club, but we don't know where it was. Looking like the same night as the previous picture, the band have gone off for a break, and this guy's playing a banjo ukulele. And now everyone's up on the dance floor, and this man's instantly recognisable as Bill Bellaby, former Guildford Borough Councillor, Surrey County Councillor, twice Mayor of Guildford, and with his wife Doreen they were honoured with the freedom of the Borough of Guildford. Here everyone seems to be enjoying the speech that the guy's giving, just before they tuck into their dinner. Note the candles to the left, and on the far right what appears to be a rather large punch bowl. And what must be the same occasion in the next two pictures. In the third, the arch windows give the location away as the Wooden Bridge pub at the foot of Woodbridge Hill. But the identity of the ladies in these two pictures, unfortunately, we do not know. Although Dave never tied the knot and got married, he did attend an awful lot of weddings, usually with his camera. The first picture we see here is the wedding car, suitably decorated before the bride and groom go off on their honeymoon. It's pictured in Woodbridge Road, outside the Drum and Arms. But we do wonder whether the reception had taken place in the Corporation Club that was just a little way up Drummond Road on the left. And then brides and grooms and their family and friends at other weddings and also at wedding receptions. There are a number of pictures here that Dave took at the same wedding reception. Once again, we don't know the location, but some posters on the walls reveal that it may have been a scout hut. Here, the people enjoying a night out are gathered around the snooker tables at this club. You can see one of the snooker table's lampshades in the top left of the first picture, with the table below covered with a cloth. They don't want any drinks spilt on them, not to mention fag ash. The nosh on the other tables, at which the people are sitting, include soft rolls, sausage rolls and volivons. Some of the men are drinking bottled beer from half-pint glasses, and the women... Could gin and orange be there, Tipple? Ah, it's Christmas time again. And who's the young woman with this baby? And then the granddad, also holding the child. On the 26th of March 2002, Dave and I were invited to our good friend Charlie Hampshire's retirement party, which was held jointly with another railway colleague at the railway club, Woking. Both Dave and I took a number of photographs of the event. Dave managed to organise two group photographs, the first one showing guests seated from left to right, Eric Hearn, Fred Ringer, Tim Crowley, Billy Williams, Ted Greavesherd, Charlie Holter and John Beeson. Standing from left to right are Derek Cater, Mick Sparrow, Alex McClymont, Peter Smurden, Jim Granger, Doug Stent, Terry Butwell, Derek Ansell, Sammy Rowe, Fred Garnham, 
Lou Aldridge, Brian Davey, Jim Newell, Gordon Pearce, Peter Bunce, Alan Ackhurst, Dennis Copas, Bill Tickner and Frank Saxby. The second group photo shows sitting from left to right Anne Hampshire, Mick Lewington, Charlie Hampshire, Ray Cox, Mac McCabe, George Mickey, George Lynham, Dave Newbury, Lou Aldridge and Karen Thake. Standing from left to right are Bob Hind, Mick Hill, Bernie Nibbs, Peter Johns, Alan Bristow, Dave Champion, Bob Hunt, Andy Hawkins, Nigel Lunn, Steve West, Andy Bajant, Chris Berriman, Dougie Dunstall, Paul Ringer, Dave Hewson, Mark Embry, Ian Verinder, Nick Waite, Barry Foster, Paul Summerfield, John Harrison, Dave Morgan, Nigel Elliott and Dick Bullen. On the 21st of September 2004, Dave and I were also invited to our good friend Alex McClymont's retirement party. This was also held at the Woking Railway Club, where we again took a number of photographs. Here, Alex is holding a framed print of rebuilt West Country Class 34027 Tor Valley, and I think Dave had provided the original photograph. There were quite a number of guests that evening, and this photo, entitled Guildford Steam Men, Dave's got in on the act. And sitting in the front row from left to right are Alex McClymont, Fred Garnham, Alan Ackhurst, Derek Gain, Alan Hughes and John Berriman. Standing from left to right are George Mickey, Dave Newbury, Dave Salmon, Alan Johns, Malcolm Phillips, Dave Hewson, Brian Ainsley, Mick Foster, Jeff Ball, Lenny Boxall, Bernie Nibbs, Ray Bartlett, Pat Kinsella, Terry Aylesbury, Brian Sessions, Terry Butwell, Frank Saxby, Bill Tickner, Lou Aldridge and Jeff Sumner. In the next photo that Dave took, a number of younger drivers joined the group and seated from left to right are Dave Jackson, Dave Newbury, George Mickey, Pat Kinsella, Terry Aylesbury and Bill Tickner. Standing from left to right are Fred Garnham, Alex McClymont, Mick Lockyer, John Berriman, Ray Bartlett, Jim Lester, Ron Baird, Chris Berriman, Alan Ackhurst, Barry Foster, Dave Hewson, Mark Taylor, Frank Saxby, Bill Flayhive, Terry Butwell, Ian Verinder, Alan Johns, Sue Kitchen, Bernie Nibbs, Lenny Boxall, Alan Hughes, Steve West, Lou Aldridge, Colin Watkins, Alan Nichols and Derek Gain. This section features photographs Dave took beyond Guildford Town Centre, starting with some views of the River Way, first at Millmead Lock, and in the background the Ivanano Theatre, and also the pumping station of what was then the Guildford and Godalm Inn District Water Board. We see the Jolly Farmer Pub and Leroy's Boathouse, some wintry scenes from January 1967, and boats of the Guildford Sea Cadets moored in front of their premises with the Seven Arch Railway Bridge behind. Focusing now on Guildford Cathedral, it can be seen just behind the trees but the image that Dave was probably after were these sheds at the top of Ridgemount and once part of Guildford Park Farm. With building work mostly completed, Guildford Cathedral was consecrated in 1961. Here's a sign pointing the way to it, with Dennisville in the background, and you can also see a safeguard bus. And these signs on Stag Hill outside the cathedral sound that by 1965, 18,400 pounds was still needed to complete the building of it. Over to St Catherine's Village on the Portsmouth Road now and what have been the showrooms of Coombs Motor Dealers of Guildford. Turnham Close has been built there now. Roadworks on the A3 looking north in 1979 
with the bridge that takes the slip road of the A31 over towards Farnham on the Hog's Back. This is that bridge that was beset with problems after it was constructed. And some say the land here had a curse put on it by gypsies many, many years ago. White lining in front of the Wooden Bridge pub at the foot of Woodbridge Hill here. Before the A3 improvements, which means today's bypass in effect bypasses the old bypass. Originally known as Dennis Brothers, the famous firm that made fire engines, buses, dust carts and a host of other specialist vehicles in Guildford had begun developing its factory at Woodbridge from 1905. In 1972 it became Hest Air Dennis. It sold the Woodbridge site, renting back about two thirds of it to maintain vehicle production while other firms moved into the redundant workshops. By the 1980s the site was up for redevelopment and in 1986 Dave took these pictures showing the demolition of the office buildings that had once fronted the railway line. In 1991, Dennis completed its move to a new factory on the Slyfield Industrial Estate. Here are two pictures of the old co-op dairy that was at the Woodbridge Hill end of Woodbridge Road. It opened in the 1930s and it bottled milk for the Guildford, Woking and Aldershot Cooperative Societies. These buildings were demolished in the early 1990s. And finally in this section, office buildings in cross lanes off London Road being demolished in 1988. They had once been the offices of Cowan Gates Home Counties Dairies. While the last picture, Dave noted as being West House that was burnt out at Merrow in March 1985. This final selection of pictures that Dave took over a number of years, closer to his home in Artillery Road. First up we see some vintage cars passing along Woodbridge Road. He also took some pictures of them at the car park outside the Civic Hall in Dean Road. We don't know the date but it looks to be the late 1960s. He took this picture of Artillery Road in 1986 using a 300mm lens and it really does capture beautifully the late Victorian architecture found in this part of Guildford. And why not take some pictures of your road when it's being resurfaced? These are dated 15th of August 1980 and in the final picture Dave noted the man there was known as Digger. Who doesn't take pictures when it snows? And Dave photographed Artillery Road on January the 13th, 1985. And then again on February the 5th, 1986, the second picture being taken in his back garden. Two businesses that were once in Church Road, pictured in October 1987, Mrs Risbridge's milliner's shop and Geoffrey Stevens' horologist. These are now residential properties. Dramatic pictures of a fire that took place in Queens Road off Stoke Road in 1985. First viewed from Stoke Fields you can see the smoke billowing into the air and then as Dave got closer you can see the flames and a fireman putting them out. This would appear to be the premises of scrap metal dealers Simpson and Sons as Dave photographed at a later date. The site has now been developed for housing. Three pictures taken in the 1980s. The first showing the roundabout at the junction of York Road and Woodbridge Road. The newly planted trees there have certainly grown since then. 
Next, Samfield School, where Dave went when he was a boy. And thirdly, St Saviour's Church in Woodbridge Road, a building he knew so well. And finally, to round off this wonderful collection of photographs by Dave Salmon, two evocative sunset pictures. The first over the rooftops in Artillery Road, and secondly a view towards Guildford Cathedral. <laughs>